Welcome to Lecture 7 of Module 1, Identify a Pixel's Color Value. Wow, what does that mean and why would I want to be able to do that? Well, there's a number of things and, you know, stuff that I talk about now may or may not make sense to you 100%, but as we progress through the different modules, working with color and all that kind of stuff, at some point the light will definitely go on to see the bigger picture. All right, so now, uh, in order to select a color, all right, or first of all, let's just go back. I'm going to use the Move tool, and I'm going to put my cursor in the sky area over here, and then what I want you to do is take a look at this. I'm going to actually pull this out so it's closer to my document. And when I put my cursor, the Move Tool cursor, inside the document window, all right, I'm going to get our R, G, and B readout values, my red, green, and blue values. I'm also going to get the C and Y, K values, and I'm going to get the X and Y coordinates. All right, so there you go. So now you can see that I've got my cursor here. And there's my red, green, and blue values, my CMYK values, and then my X and Y coordinate. As I move down, you can see my X and Y coordinates change, and the red, green, and blue values change. All right. So now if I bring my cursor inside here, you can see I have different RGB values. And if I bring my cursor over here, I have, again, different values. If I go in here, I'm going to have very low values. And if I come to the front of the white on the concrete here, I'm going to have much higher values. My values go between 0 and 255. All right. So now you're wondering, well, if I wanted to know what that value was, but I'm clicking here and or you know noticing that I want this color or I'm noticing I want that shade in there or this shade over here. How can I actually get to actually see that stuff? Well, you know, and to hold on to it so I can actually reference back to that. Well, in order to do that, we need to start off using the eyedropper tool. Now, if I click and hold on the eyedropper tool, you're going to also see that we have something called the color sampler tool. And the color sampler tool is identical to the eyedropper tool, except it's got this little target symbol right here in the upper left-hand corner. All right. Well, in order to get that target symbol, really, all we need to do is hold down the shift key temporarily. All right. So I'm just holding down and then I click on this and I end up putting a sample point in my document. And now I can move my cursor anywhere I want. And you can see down here, I have the red, green, and blue values locked in, always there for me to uh, check out and see. Now I'm going to come over here and click again. So now I have another RGB value sitting in there. And there's a number of reasons why you would want to uh, highlight those guys. Keep your eye on them. If I'm doing some kind of color correction, lightening, darkening, changing the hues of things, I want to maybe keep my eye on the RGB values so they don't go out of uh, registration too much or out of the relationship of the red, green, and blue values. They just go a little bit this way or a little bit that way. Okay. Now, I don't know if there's going to be a lot of call for this, but this is how we do things. Now, I'm sampling, all right, my, my, my eyedropper tool is sampling the color based on this sample size right here. Now, default is going to be point sample. Point sample means that absolutely one specific pixel under the hotspot of the cursor is the value that I'm going to read. All right, most of the time you'll want to have a three by three average and if you're sampling skin tones for portrait retouching then you'll probably want to go five by five so at a minimum keep this at three by three you can do your portrait retouching with three by three as well many many people do all right so now across here we have the option to sample all layers or current and current layer current blow all layers all layers but no adjustment and all that kind of nonsense all right just leave it on all layers for now and then we have show sampling ring I'll get to that in a second. What I want to be able to do is I want to be able to come over here and clear these guys out and get rid of these little target things. So I'm wondering if I come over here and if I actually choose the color sampler tool, now I can actually clear these targets out. All right, click on them. They are gone. 
So now I'm going to come back over here and choose my eyedropper tool again. I'm going to show you the real business of the eyedropper tool, and that is uh, to select colors. So you can actually set that selected color as your foreground color. Okay, so there's reasons for this, and I'll give you one example. If I wanted to um, put some text into this uh, image, and if I'm sending this off to a printing press, as an example, where you have your cyan, magenta, uh, yellow, and black plates, all right, if I was to introduce yet one more color, even a custom color, whatever, I would add another 20 or 25% to the cost of the printing job. So one of the things that is commonly done is we sample a color somewhere that's already currently in the image and use that for our type. All right, or any other kind of a inset box that we want to go and create. So now with the sample ring checked on, this is what's going to happen. All right, notice I have black and white foreground and background colors. And if I come over here and click on this, you're going to see that I get this little sample ring. Now, the bottom half of the inner circle is the foreground color I had prior to clicking on this. The top half is the color that my cursor is actually sampling right now. And that gray, middle gray ring around the edge there is just to give you some contrast. At least that's all I've been able to figure it out to be. So now I've gone and selected that. If I now come down and click on that, the, the uh, let's go with the dark blue or black car over there. And if I was to click on that, I have now set that dark blue-ish to be my foreground color. And you can see that the light blue, the bottom portion of that ring, is uh, the foreground color I had a second ago. If I now come over here and click on this guy, you can now see that my foreground color will be a golden color, and the previous was a very, very dark blue. All right, all the time that I'm doing this, no matter where I'm clicking, I'm changing my foreground color. Changing my foreground color. Changing my foreground color, always changing my foreground color. All right. Now, if I wanted to change my background color, then all I have to do is hold down the Option or Alt key. And if I do that, I'm going to click on the yellow. And now you can see that previously my background color was white. That's the bottom half of the inner circle. And currently, well, no matter where I move this, and it's a live update, which is really kind of neat, all right, I can see the color that I'm setting for my background color. If you look over in the color chips, you'll see that the background color chip is now a golden color. All right, so that's how you sample colors and select colors and change your foreground and background based on specific colors in your document window that you're interested in getting and looking at and all that kind of fun stuff. All right, so there you go. I just went and sampled that dark Canadian leaf, maple leaf in there. Now, to bring up your color picker, because we can come over here and click on the color picker, and then come over here and choose this, and then click OK, and now I've changed my foreground color from whatever it was I had previously selected with my eyedropper tool. But if you want to have that heads-up display color picker, thing show up when you're using the eyedropper tool, then this is really something you have to hold down the command, the option, and the shift keys, as well as the control key. All right. And then when I click on here, I'm just going to click on the red. Well, I end up with this guy here. And it all has to do with the starting point of what your foreground color was. Okay. So now you can come around here and move this around. And you can see, based on all right, some of this stuff, what's going on. All right, so I have blue in this window because I had blue as my foreground color and that's where this guy is here. But if I move up to red or back down through green, yellow, and all that kind of stuff, I can change what's going on in here and then I eventually change what my foreground color will be. Now, the way this box works is that the lower left-hand corner is pure black all right, pure black down there, pure white up here. All right, as I move from left to right, I increase saturation. 
And as I move from the top down, I decrease or increase my brightness value. And you can see that on the two sides of the uh, rainbow slider over here. You can see that that's what's going on. So if I come over here, put that up in there, and then come over here and do this, and then say, you know, I need to be a little bit more in the brighter red area. So I'm just going to drag that up as far as I can, let go, and I have pure red over here. If I click on this to get this, you can see that I'm right about there. All right, I probably wanted to be right up in there, so I do that. Now, I personally don't use the heads-up color display picker thing that often, but you may and I needed to let you guys see how that works. What I'm going to do now is hit the D key to reset my foreground and background colors to back to where they were. I'm going to drag this guy and put him back inside there. So he is docked away, sitting over there at that point in time. And I think that's about all I wanted to show you with respects to uh, using the uh, color picker eyedropper tool and all that kind of stuff. So now what we're going to do is get ready for the last in the series of module one and that is lecture eight and that deals with file size and resolution and we'll see you in the next movie.